Good morning, Exeter. My name is Tony Downer, class of 1975, spouse of 75, parent 06, 06, 07, and a proud former alumnus of Langdale Hall. It is my privilege to serve as the president of the Academy's trustees. The deed of gift written by Elizabeth and John Phillips entrusts the trustees with the paramount responsibility of selecting the Academy's principal. On behalf of my fellow trustees who are here with me today, it is my honor to share with you our decision regarding the future of that position. Oh, I've got your attention now. <laughs> Last spring, when we appointed Bill Rawson as interim principal for a two-year term, given the timing and duration required by a formal search for a principal whose service would commence on July 1, 2020, the trustees anticipated that we would name a search committee and embark on the search process at our January meeting, which is currently taking place at this time. In the meantime, Throughout last fall, individual trustees have been approached on an unsolicited basis time and time again by faculty, staff, alums, and parents asking us, and indeed urging us, to consider extending interim principal Bill Rawson's service by naming him the Academy's next principal. Given the importance of the decision as to whether or not to conduct a search the trustees undertook extensive outreach to discern the Exeter community's views on the matter. Altogether, we held one-on-one -on -one conversations with more than 65 faculty and staff, including department heads, dorm heads, and staff members. We tapped into the student body's perspective by meeting with the Dean's Council, a group comp comprised of students holding a broad array of leadership positions. In addition, we sought alum input through outreach undertaken by the 18 directors of the General Alumni Association who serve as representatives of the alumni body. Those engagement efforts convey to us a chorus of pronounced support for selecting Bill Rawson. Exeter is a demanding environment. It holds itself to an uncommonly high standard, a standard of excellence in all of its endeavors. The values we cherish most dearly, non-sibi, knowledge and goodness, youth from every quarter, respect for each and every member of the community, inspire us to be the best version of ourselves in our relationships with others and in the pursuit of our individual aspirations. We are a community that expects the exceptional from our leadership. We seek in our principle an individual who does not simply understand our values, but who models those values and how she or he lives. We expect the principal to lead the community by articulating a vision, with that vision deeply informed by the community's perspectives. We expect the principal to manage the institution by making decisions, and often making difficult decisions, based upon her or his personal judgment and moral compass, while at the same time soliciting and listening to the input of others. And we require that the principal be present, indeed to be omnipresent on the campus and off, at the performances, on the sidelines, in the hallways, in the dorms, and at countless co locations around the globe, genuinely and authentically connecting with students, faculty, staff, parents, and alum. These requirements are merely the foremost of an endless list of expectations we hold out for our principal, and it takes an extraordinary individual to fulfill our expectations. At the end of our deliberative process, the trustees resoundingly decided that we have that extraordinary individual to lead our community forward. It is my great pleasure and honor to announce to you this morning the trustees' appointment of William Knox Rawson as the 16th principal of Phillips Exeter Academy.
go. One more. There we go. Please join me in congratulating Principal Rawson on his appointment. On behalf of the Exeter community, we pledge to you our committed support to working with you to ensure that the Academy continues to fulfill its mission of providing an unmatched education of goodness, knowledge, and excellence for our youth from every quarter. I beg Mr. Donner to be short. <laughs> that seemed awfully long. Um, the first time I spoke to you, I said we would finish early, and I gave you t-shirts. Today we're going to finish late, and I don't have anything. Um, however, uh, I dispute what Mr. Miller said about uh, crossing a street without <laughs> waving. On the other hand, as my first, real, first official act, why not? Yeah. Ice cream for all. I want to thank Mr. Miller for his presentation, and I hope you uh, take it as a challenge for us to be uh, our best environmental stewards. We have a lot to be proud of, our geothermal, our, our solar panels, but without a doubt, uh, we can do more. And when a speaker comes here, it's really a way of asking you questions. What can we do to be a better exeter? So thank you, Mr. Miller, and thank you for your attention to his remarks, and thank you for taking them to heart and thinking about what we can do. Of course, I want to thank uh, Mr. Downer, Tony, for his kind words and expression of support. I want to thank all the trustees for their confidence in me and their support. And of course, I want to thank all of you, uh, students and adults, who are really the center of our school community for your encouragement and support. At a moment like this, one is keenly aware that this is not an individual accomplishment. It's really a reflection of the influences many others have had in my life. I owe enormous debts of gratitude, and there are many whom I wish could be here today to share in this moment and be recognized. It's not particularly important for you to know that, uh, but as you can tell, it's very important for me to know that and to say that. So that's the hard part. Now it gets a little easier. So to the students, I'd like to say it has been a, just a delight getting to know you during the course of this school year. And I hope you remember the most important thing that I said at opening assembly, and that is that you all belong here. You all belong here. So I hope you will believe in yourselves as we believe in you. You are here to grow in knowledge and goodness and to prepare to live useful lives, purposeful lives. And of course, that starts with how you live your lives here. And I believe we can accomplish great things together. And I believe along the way, we can have a lot of fun together. I'm very excited to be your principal. To the adults, I'd like to say that it's also been a tremendous pleasure getting to know many of you during my first few months here. I'm enormously grateful for the support you showed me, really, from the time I arrived, and even before I arrived, when many of you wrote uh, to share your thoughts about our great school. And I want to say that every job you do, every report you write, every course you teach, uh, every course you design, every practice you coach, every rehearsal you conduct, every uh, crosswalk you patrol, every path you shovel, every meal you serve, every job you do is important. And there are many jobs that I didn't mention because we have so many. We have one school, one community with a common mission. Attending Exeter was a transformative experience for me. I'm 
deeply committed to helping make Exeter the same for you and for all who follow you. I'm committed to doing all I can to support the Exeter of today while working with all of you to envision the Exeter of tomorrow. It is with those responsibilities and commitments in mind that I've accepted this appointment. Many of you, perhaps most of you know, that I worked in the admissions office for two years quite a while ago, starting in July of 1976 and returning in June, uh, ending uh, in June of 1978. After that, I took a 40-year leave of absence. <laughs> I'm delighted to be back. I'm excited to be your principal. Thank you. Senior class.